my name is Daryl Patton, uh, retired special education teacher, so you guys are no problem at all. I've taught autistic kids for 30 <laughs> years. In 1983, I got out of the military, was homesteading. I've got every mother's news I ever wrote, countryside, you name it, raised everything in the world. And as I was finishing up my degree in special education, I had five different people came up to me and said, hey, do you know who Tommy Bass is? I'd never heard the old guy, but he was 20 minutes from my house. So I thought, okay, none of these people know each other. Take a hand, go see the old guy. So I drove 20 minutes up and I thought, 20 minutes there, set my alarm clock and I can leave. So there's this little old guy up on the roof putting his tin down of a shack. And I said, Mr. Bass, can I come talk to you about plants? Why, sure, son, you just come on in. And I went in there, set my alarm clock for 20 minutes, and exactly 20 minutes later and three hours later, I finally <laughs> left. And was absolutely hooked by his personality, his kindness, and an amazing knowledge of plants. And so I started going up to his house, and by the time I'd get there, I had this big giant leaf bag full of well, that looks interesting. Offside road. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he'd tell me what it was, tell me what it was, how to use it. Don't know this one, don't know this one. When we got through the part he didn't know was this big, that man he didn't know was this big, and he explained to me that when he grew up, he was born in 1908, they were sharecroppers. And for them, that was one step above slavery. You know, they were dirt, dirt, poor. And everybody went to the woods to build for the food and their medicine. And when he was seven years old, he spent that winter with newspapers for shoots. And so he was smart at that age, he was already out chopping cotton and, and hunting for the family. That he went to an old black midwife who birthed you, treated you with herbs, laid you out when you died if you were poor. White, black, or Indian, if you were poor, she was it. And she started teaching him herbs and sending people to him. And he did that, worked with a Cherokee lady off the reservation of Oklahoma. And so for the next 81 years, that's what he did. So for 13 years, that means long in the woods, learn places. And when I went up to his place the first day, my knowledge of plants was there's pine trees, that's everything else. But he awakened <laughs> a gift to me I didn't know I had, and that was the ability to know a plant the first time I see it. Other than the occasional brain spasm, you know, I, once you see them, I got them. All right. This is? Chicory. Chicory. Think dandelion. Mm -hmm. All the uses of dandelion for the liver and the kidneys and the bladder, heartburn, all the same. It is not a potassium sparing diuretic like dandelion is, but otherwise use it the same. And you use the roots. You make chicory coffee, but it's a great bitter tonic. Anybody ever been to Europe? You people, what do they drink before a meal? A little shot of bitters in some mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And that starts the process of digestion. Here, what do we do? Shonies! <laughs> Head home, you're already watching Alabama beat everybody else. Roll tight. Uh, <laughs> before your stomach even knows you've eaten. Whereas if you drink anything bitter or even think bitter, I'm already salivating thinking about it, you start releasing tylen, amylase to break down simple sugars, gastric juices, vial to break down fatty acids. So before you take your first bite, you've already started digesting your food. And so you get the more food value out of your food than you would otherwise. Now, growing up in the South, when it came time to have a meal, in my family you had choices. And the choices were clean your plate, wait till Jesus returned and hope you got raptured, <laughs> sat there till hell froze over and it was cold as ice, you still ate it, or you hopefully had a dog. But you were taught you did not waste food, you cleaned your plate. Now, portions are huge and we're still up here, you eat. Got to do that. And that's why you work with the herbs that help digestion, that helps offset some of that. Great medicinal plant because the modern day thing to keep healthy is you go get roto rooter, get a colon. Strips everything good, band the ugly out. The old belief was that if you kept the liver healthy, it's the master organ, controlled everything else, took the load off them, and you'd be much healthier. And it's a great liver. All right. And this is? Honeycomb. What kind? 
sure. Japanese honeysuckle. Okay, is it native or non-native? Japanese. <laughs> if it's Japanese. Japanese honeysuckle. But it's the main honeysuckle everybody knows. They think it's native because, you know, it's the common coral honeysuckle is not as common as you might think. You remember the movie Contagion with Jude Law? Where everybody was dying of a pandemic, flu-like illness. And he was running around saying, the remedy is... Uh -uh. Forsythia. Forsythia is the cure. And then he died. Well, he forgot to add the honeysuckle in it. If you do some research on honeysuckle, in main part uses are the blossoms and the young twigs that are stems at the very end. It is being considered the equivalent to penicillin <coughs> for viral infections, respiratory viruses. Really powerful respiratory antiviral. If you go to Walmart and you get a product called Airborne, mm -hmm. throw off every ingredient in it except for two, forsythia and honeysuckle. That's what keeps you from getting viral infections and bacterial infections on the plane. Very, very effective. So in the springtime, you can pick your forsythia, or what people call yellow bells, you know, in your yard. True, the true medicine from China is made with little nutlets because they've got the original version of this plant that makes a nutlet. We've got hybrids, so you use the blossoms. And then honeysuckle blossoms. Really, really effective, especially for things like colds and flus. Makes, if you want to make a really nice perfume, because you cannot buy honeysuckle perfume. You're buying fake stuff, it, it breaks down. You just take some honeysuckle blossoms, put them in a container, some sweet oil on a cotton ball, leave it for about three days so the honeysuckle's away. Run. <laughs> um, I always ask when I do a plant walk and I see this tree, anybody want to get pregnant? <laughs> I ain't volunteering. <laughs> but this is an old Creek Indian remedy or formula for promoting fertility and it's interesting because a it one of the side effects is twins often and it's one that both the man and the woman drink throughout the cycle because if you go back to the old days you know if you couldn't have kids who got blamed a woman but sometimes the men have little issues with floaties and swimmies that don't want to swim as well as they should so the indians were smart enough to know that both the man and the woman take it, somebody's gonna work, or both of them, hopefully both of them, and use the inner bark. If you, uh, anybody do make their own sourdough? Mm -hmm. Take the, the fruit, and if you look at it when it's, it's got the berries on it and fruit, they're whitish looking. That's a combination of yeast and wax. So you can start, make your own sourdough starter with it. As soon as you get it going, you take the berries out or it'll make it bitter. Very good. Uh, uh, antiviral, extremely good for urinary infections, many, many things for it. And this is actually a juniper, it's not the true red cedar. It's, it's eastern red cedar, but it's actually a member of the juniper family. And if you find the big trees, if you ever see anybody do primitive fire making, it's where you make your tinder bundle to get the fire started out of this. But uh, really good medicine. Now, up here, you're going to see English ivy. Mm -hmm. Don't ever plant this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Worst stuff in the world. Yeah. About four or five times a year, I'll have people come to me and say, I am eaten up with poison ivy, but I wasn't in it. And I said, well, and I take one look and I know. I said, well, what were you doing? Well, I was out in the yard weed eating or cleaning. I said, were you, were you cleaning English ivy? Well, yeah, we were pulling English ivy. And that's what got them. About 30% of the population. Oh, it's electric. This is a rattlesnake. They don't realize it. And the difference you can tell is this. If you have poison ivy, you'll get little blisters, little pustules. With this, it looks like somebody pulled sur poured sulfuric acid on you and just burnt you as crusty like eczema can be and just red and rough. And I learned about it before I even got into herbs because I bought a house, had a bank of it, and cleaned it all off. And like to die. All I knew was I went down to Panama City and laid in the ocean for three days trying to care. But that's what does it. It'll eat you up. Not everybody's allergic to it, though. My wife has to pull it at our house, what, what we've got, because I can't touch it. I could pick this right there, drop it, do that, and in about 15 minutes, I'll have a whelp come up. And I eat poison ivy leaves every year to immunize myself and teach people how to do this, and I ain't got the guts yet to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, this just makes me so sad. It missed. A hen of the woods. Yeah. Oh, like done, gone. It's, you saw the ones yeah. on my table. I mean, that's even too far gone for me. 
<laughs> He's yeah. Smells just wonderful. I hope we have Also some. known as maitake in Japan. Mm -hmm. Very powerful for regulating the immune system. How many of you, hey, this is perfect. How many of you grew up with black and white TVs? What's that on top of those TVs? And rabbit ears. So, if the TV signal went wonky on Lawrence Welk, <laughs> what is the first thing you did? Mess with Adjust rabbit the antennas, ears. right? Mm -hmm. If that didn't work, <laughs> aluminum foil. If that didn't work, what did you do? Had the husband stand there. The, uh -uh, <laughs> the youngest kid in the family adjust. Stay that way until Lawrence Welk is over. <laughs> or in some cases, he haul. <laughs> and if none of those work, the last resort that always seemed to work was you walked up, you went, bam, you smacked the side of the TV. Yep. And it seemed like that was, don't work, don't, does not work with hard drives, by the way. <laughs> not a good idea. And that's what Hen of the Woods and some other medicinal mushrooms, uh, what we know as poke salad also does this, is they reset the immune system. They smack your body and say, hey, but for example, you <laughs> get stung by a honeybee, Next thing you know, <gasps> anaphylactic shock, 911. Well, I get stung by the honeybee and I just go, ow, man, Matt. Now, why don't I get to die like you get to die? <laughs> We're both human beings, so I should have the same reaction as you. But you ate at Jack's or Hardy's or something, and that caused you to become allergic to bees, or you looked the wrong way at somebody. Who knows? It doesn't matter. But for some reason, your body is having a histamine reaction to that bee venom. The medicinal plants go in there and they say, hey, or like with celiac disease or Crohn's disease, or rheumatoid arthritis, they say, hey, stop fighting yourself. You're not the enemy. The enemy is the rheumatoid arthritis. The, re the enemy is the Crohn's disease. Those are the type of things that the medicinal mushrooms that work that way, <coughs> and some of the plants like poke salad and echinacea do the same thing, is they reset the immune system. In fact, one of the big therapies in medicine right now is immune therapy for cancer mm -hmm. but if you read the fine print or they do a, and they also will bottom your immune system out for things like Crohn's disease or psoriatic arthritis so the body stops fighting itself but on the flip side after you stop taking the medicine it can cause your immune system to go into overdrive and kill you by attacking your body the the plant medicine is a, an immunomodulator it says be strong but don't be attacking the body it's it's amazing how it works uh, that tree trunk was what kind of tree? Anybody got an idea? Oak. Now, what's my second question? Oak. What kind of oak? <laughs> White oak. Why? Because the trunk is so thick and round. Well, that's true. It could it could be a, a big water oak though. But you know why it's this white a white oak? Because you had a, had a hen right of the woods it. on it. Yeah. And hen of the woods. Oh, Most yeah. of the time, that's where you'll find them is on base of white oak trees. <laughs> Sometimes, black, I got some off, those came off black oak up there, but usually it's a base, right the base of a white oak. And here's, here's one of your southern white oaks. All oaks work the same. Anyway, um, it, the way you tell the oaks apart is look at the fingers. Yeah. Smooth tips, right? Yeah. White oak family. Round if they have points, red. Maybe. Then they're gonna be red slash black oak. Red slash black oak have small acorns. As a general rule, white oaks have large acorns. So you want to gather the white oaks mostly, because it's less work to make the flower. That's what it's all about. More calories gained than calories expended. But if you remember watching the Beverly Hillbillies, Granny had two remedies. One was her fire water, moonshine. <laughs> the other one was stump water. That was basically where water just laid up in an old stump and it leached the tannins out. And then you'd soak athletic food, as they'd call them in the south, uh, ringworms, anything you wanted to dry, constrict, contract moist tissue, and it would pull it out. And oak, the white oak in particular, is a natural antibiotic as well. It's not commonly known for that, but it is. Southern red oak, which you'll see, in a, and you'll see it driving down the road, it looks like a oak, just, it's just dehydrated. It's, even springtime it looks like they're just drooping and the bottom side is brown they it, all oaks work the same but the southern red oak also works for hepatitis and psoriasis mm -hmm. excellent plant. you can take especially white oak is my favorite to do this with take the white oak bark mix it 50 50 with shrub yellow root 
And if you have somebody you know that's had chemo or radiation and they can't wear their dentures because it makes the gums turn soft, spongy, and swell up as a hot rinse several times a day in, a, in about four or five days, it'll tighten the gums back up, stop the bleeding, and take the pain out and they can wear their dentures again. Yeah. Now you're getting a three hour walk condensed down into 40 minutes, so yeah. forget the speed. <laughs> All right, all of these briars, that those in the back you can't see, probably called that. saw briar. You ever heard of its other name? Of sarsaparilla. Remember old cowboy bellies up the bar? Give me a sarsaparilla. Is that a sarsaparilla? sarsaparilla and root beer are basically the same drink. They vary the recipes mm -hmm. up a little bit on either one of them. But this is in, if you go to a health food store, you can buy what they call tincture of Smilax. And for men, it builds muscle mass. See, bodybuilders will build it and it acts as a source of steroids, but it's not steroids. It's the precursor to steroids. So it's actually a really good liver herb. It's excellent for the liver. All right, guys, I want to show y'all something. So hold your fingers up. Put them like this. <laughs> Push them in real tight. You too. Real tight. For women, it builds bosoms. <laughs> Same thing, but it, it's not a steroid, so it doesn't hurt your liver. This is the second plant I go to the root for people with irritable bowel spasms. It's second to wild yam for reducing the, the spasming of the colon down. The young tendrils on the tips, you can eat, we call them Cossack asparagus, you steam them, eat them, eat them raw, doesn't matter. The berries you can suck on for a horse throat. The leaves you can actually, the young tender leaves you can cook and eat. When I first started working with Tommy Bass, yeah. I went to him one year and I said, Tommy, what in the world do you do for poison ivy? I said, I am so tired of catching it. I'm real, real sensitive to it. Uh, as a kid, I got into it in San Francisco in Poison Oak and liked to die. It was in intensive care. And I said, I'm either I'm picking herbs and getting it, uh, digging the fox set when I was trapping and getting it, and I'm tired of getting cortisone shots. And he said, why, son? Go get you the sweet, I mean the sweet, I'm thinking sweet gum now. Go get you the leaves from the, the size of a mouse's ear, put them in a pinch of bread, don't touch your lips, and eat two or three times a week, every couple of days, take them. Now, if you told me that, I'd say, you out of your mind. I trusted this man, he walked on water as far as I'm concerned. So I walked up there with my little piece of loaf bread, as I said, pinched off a little tiny one, got a little three sets of leaflets, and my heart was about to to bust. I thought I was going to have a coronary. And I didn't die. Two or three days later, I went back and did it again. Didn't die. And for 30 years now, I've taught this and used it and to a point now where, I'll, you know, these are too big to use. Use the little leaves. But I'll still go up and you can just pick like that. Just eat it. Now, of course, I'll be long gone before I break out so you don't know the <laughs> And what is, it's an immune therapy that just breathes up. Well, just like yeah. getting smallpox vaccine, anything. And what you can do now is take some empty gelatin capsules. In the spring, when those leaves first come out, pinch them off with a pair of tweezers, stick them in the capsule, cap it, let it dry for two or three days, and then just take one every couple of three days. You know, two or three days, whatever, doesn't matter. I take them, when I do do them like that, I just take one every day so I don't forget and until I forget and then it'll give you about a year's worth of immunity some people get two or three years out of it and I've done it so long now that most years I forget to do it unless I'm doing it for a class and, and unless I was just rolling I don't ever catch it. When you guys were down harassing our ancestors <laughs> we could not get through the Yankee blockade and so the Confederate Surgeon General went to a, a, a South Carolinian planter slash doctor who's president of AMA in South Carolina at the time named Dr. Francis Porche. P-O-R-C-H-E-R. -E now remember this name because you want to get his book. He wrote a book called Resources of Southern Fields and Forests. Now the actual title is about 16 words, but that will get you. If you Google that, you can look on Amazon, eBay, place it, get about 30 bucks up to 70 bucks. If y'all will, all, there's enough people, if y'all will all chip in about 20 bucks a piece, I can buy a $3,000 copy original one of it. <laughs> I would love to get one from 1863. What was the name of it again? Resources, Resources of Southern Fields and Forests. Francis Perry Porsche. In it, it's about a 700 page book of all of the resources in the South that we can get without going through the blockade. Everything from making gunpowder to herbal medicines to dyes, you name it. Great resource thing. And it shows you, as they say, how far the apple doesn't fall from the tree. His great, great 
probably great grandson is a very famous botanist in South Carolina now. But anyway, one of the remedies that we went back to was the use of dogwood. Now, anybody know, remember your history, know where the first capital of the Confederacy was? Montgomery, Alabama. It got moved from Montgomery to Richmond because Montgomery is surrounded by swamps, or was at the time. And what people don't realize is that in the South, malaria and yellow mm -hmm. fever were pandemic. People don't ever realize that we got malaria here. Mm -hmm. There's still about two cases a year pop up south of New Orleans. It's not very common. Had in Michigan too. In, was it? It was in Michigan too because they have uh, the same species of mosquito. But, and so it does pop up. And so they got tired of people got tired of catching yellow fever and malaria. So what did they do? They moved it to Richmond, which is surrounded by swamps. But they didn't have the problem of malaria. But what they called the low countries of South Carolina, around the Gulf Coast, and into Alabama is terrible. So they went back to a, a, an Indian remedy, and that was dogwood bark. And this boiled down to a, a system of medicine called like curing like. Now, we typically think of that as a homeopathic principle, but it actually goes all over the place. And that was that if you take, if you're healthy, you take too much, an overdose, whatever, of dogwood, it'll give you the symptoms of a disease it'll cure. You use the berries raw, green, not aged. They will give you night sweats leg cramps and a fever that will come and go in a cycle symptoms of malaria it was considered almost just about as equivalent to quinine as you could get uh, by the way tulip poplar is was considered about as equivalent as quinine too and it was considered so effective that even when the uh, Yankees couldn't get enough of it they would during truces they would barter for it across lines excellent plant you'd age the berries for a year Make the, they would make tonics out of them and send them out to the troops. Also, this is one of the two trees, the other one being black gum, that you make toothbrush out of. And it, it will make a soft fray toothbrush and it also has chemicals that will whiten your teeth. And it's one of the two plants I use, two or three, for uh, Meniere's disease, ringing in the ears. Now, another remedy during the, the war between the states was blackberry. Because what put more soldiers down on both sides? Wasn't bullets. Dysentery. Mm -hmm. At any given time, 70-80% of any battalion would be down with the runs to the point where it would actually kill people. Mm -hmm. To the point, I mean, it's water and blood coming out. So they call it the, the bloody flux. So what do you do? You gather blackberry roots, make a tea out of them, and every time you had a bowel movement, take a dose of it. And usually two or three, four doses max, you're done. If you overdo it, it'll take you from diarrhea, dysentery, to constipation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had it real bad, but it wasn't quite so bad, and it was in season, you could take the green fruit, make a tea out of it. Drink the fruit, the tea. If it was less than that, you go to the leaves. If you had kids who had the, what they called summer complaint, that basically run around barefooted, picking their nose, they'd get the runs. You'd give them blackberry jelly or syrup. That way they got their medicine without realizing they were getting medicine. The big issue with this is don't use the jam if you have irritable bowel syndrome because jam contains seeds. seeds those seeds are scouring laxative it's like sandpaper going along the walls of the intestines and they'll make it much much worse so mm -hmm. unless you de-seed your jam don't use jam what kind of willow oh, no. <laughs> it's the most common willow you'll see in the south black willow, black willow. If you see, uh, the, well, we're in the right state. You also got Virginia willow, which is not as common as broader leaves. It doesn't matter, they all work the same. Willows contain what? Cyanide. No, they don't. They Aspirin. Like this, what do they contain? They contain salicylic acid. Your body then adds what's called the acetyl group. You got acetyl salicylic acid. There's your aspirin. <laughs> However, it takes six to eight hours to add that acetyl group. So if you got a headache killing you right now, that's not gonna help a whole lot. It'll help some. Great for arthritis because you're not in as big a hurry. But the old remedy was you took the big branches, you dried them, burnt them, and then you used the ashes. And you just put a spoonful of ashes in water and that burning broke down the chemical bond so where the body could attach to the acetyl group real fast. Then it works like an aspirin. Mild, mild, very mild blood. They're not what people think. Also, if you grow a lot of plants and you want them to root like kudzu, make willow water. This is what the old nurserymen used to use 
we call the synthetic hormone. And you just take a bunch of branches, leaves on a big drum, leave it about three days in the water, take them out before they get slimy, and then water your plants and step back. It's a, amazing what it'll do. Wing stomach, how you tell okay. it? It has little wings on the patio. Now, people always say, well, isn't that staghorn stomach? No, staghorn stomach makes up north. If you got it down here, somebody planted it most likely. And it's real fuzzy and furry. It's yeah. the prettiest one of them all. The, only, the other one you'll see around here is also called smooth or, or scarlet sumac. Doesn't matter, they all work the same. Poison sumac, which is what everybody in Alabama thinks sumac is, has white, grayish white berries. They mm -hmm. hang off underneath the branches and they grow on the coast, you know, down like Montgomery on south. These yeah. will all have reddish, varying. the Koreans attacking? <laughs> Uh, has reddish berries, make great pink lemonade, mm -hmm. great kidney medicine, mouth ulcers, canker sores, uh, good, one of my secret chem, uh, in fact, if you come to the other talk I'm going to do, I'll tell you about using it for the kidneys and uh, excellent, good for diabetes, you name it. If you've ever had any Middle Eastern cooking, they have a spice in it called za'atar, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sumac berries, that's, that's what you're using. Sumac. Don't boil the berries or they'll get really astringent, it'll set the tannins make either sun tea or uh, very s carefully simmer it to get the, the color out. Once the frost hits and the rains come, all that malic acid, which is where the sourness comes from, will start to wash out and they won't be any good. Uh, it's break time. I'll be glad to stick around and answer questions and I'll be doing the, at 4.15 I'm going to talk about herbs and using them for food also. And I'm going to cook some wild yellow dark pancakes and Thank you for coming. Thank you. I know Thank it's you. a two hour walk. <laughs> oh.